Have you ever been in this situation before? Because I have, and I personally know how much it sucks. The pain of losing the fish of a lifetime. So whether you're an experienced shark guy or just starting out, listen up so you can prevent these setbacks from happening to you, as well as ensuring the safe release of these amazing creatures. There is gonna be a few bonus tips throughout the video, so make sure you guys watch the whole thing and be ready for when they pop up. Step one, choosing the right terminal tackle. A well-designed rig will drastically increase your chances of hooking and landing that monster shark, as well as even increasing your hookup ratio. So here are the steps and the tackle required to build your shark fishing rig. Leader, opt for a heavy duty monofilament leader. We opt for LP 900 and clear. You can use 900, 800, 1200, but we like 900. We found that that is the most successful while also being one of the stronger types of mono. Uh, a lot of guys like 1200, it's just not really something we like to use. Um, we don't really see a difference between 900 and 1200. So I would opt nine times out of 10 for 900 over 1200. Number two, hooks. Choose strong non-offset circle hooks. In the 18-0, 20-0, or 24-0 size range, I personally use Kekshaw Tackle's uh, non-stainless steel hooks and non-offset circle hooks as they are required because they not only increase the chance of a secure hook set, but they will rust out very quickly should the hook get stuck somewhere in the shark. Number three, we're talking about swivels and snap swivels. I personally love these 11-0 black nickel swivels from Kekshaw Tackle. They're rated for a thousand pounds and they help immensely on the leadering leader. process. When I'm up there going to grab a shark, okay, you know, you got a couple different options. You can wrap the hand, you know, you do the Gulf Coast Nation wrap where you wrap your arm around the leader. Um, I like that. Uh, not so much when it's a, you know, thousand pound hammerhead because then, you know, one foul swoop on through the water. When you use these 11 swivels, you got, you know, they can fit in your hand a little bit easier, especially with gloves on, you can hold a ton of pressure on and get these sharks in even faster. For the snap swivels, I'm using a 450 pound black nickel swivel. Um, these are very basic, you know, you're really just looking for a big part on the end there to slide, be able to slide it onto your mono, you know, because some, you know, you're using 900, 800, 1200 pound mono, some snap swivels might not be able to fit on there. We uh, use the snap swivels for our spider weights, that's where they clip in. I'll show you guys that a little bit towards the end. Number four, we're gonna talk about cable and wire, probably one of the most important parts of the video. Now, there are three different types of wire and cable leader material that will provide a different outcome based on what you use. First up, we got all reliable. Even fish, eh? Violin, stingray, been through this piano wire. Don't you tell me my business again. Single strand has been around forever, okay? Uh, it is a specialized type of wire made for use uh, in piano strings, but also other applications such as springs, surgical needs, or even warding off one of your enemies. Just kidding, don't do that. Here are a few pros of piano wire. It has extreme strength. Piano wire is renowned for its exceptional strength, making it an ideal choice for targeting large and powerful sharks. It is virtually impossible to be bitten through, and it has minimal flexibility. The stiffness of the piano wire allows for a more direct energy transfer, providing a better hook penetration and control during the fight. Now the cons are, if a single strand wraps around anything, it can kink, causing it to break under pressure. It has potential visibility. The shiny appearance of the piano wire uh, can be more visible to sharks and potentially affecting their strike response. And then number two, we don't have this one up here, but it's non-coated cable. It's basically this without the sand colored uh, film around it. I'm not even gonna talk about it. I hate non-coated cable. It's garbage, don't use it. Why not use coated cable? It's a little bit more, but it's a little bit better too. So I would use coated cable. So with that, we're gonna talk about coated cable. Some of the pros are that it's corrosion resistance. I'm able to go out there with a coated cable rig, okay, and use this for months on end, years. I probably still have some leaders from a year ago that are still in great condition. Uh, this guy's been fished multiple times, no corrosion on it, um, and they just hold up over time. They have reduced visibility too. Now, if you guys had to take a second and guess, what does this look like when you're fishing? It looks like the sand. Where's your shark rig sitting after you drop it? In the sand. It's not that easy to see for a shark. Uh, it's easier handling and stuff feels great when you're trying to make a rig. Does it poke your hands? Does it do anything? And some of the cons are potential wear and tear over time. The coating might wear off, but as I said, it's really not going to, especially in areas of 
constant friction, particularly exposing the underlying cable to corrosion. Uh, it's practically useless if a shark does chew it up. With every one out of three sharks, uh, I'll get my cable back and it's chewed up. So I just have to, really simple, I just take the cable part off, put a new piece on, and I'm good to go. Um, and it's a higher cost. It is a little bit more pricey, but I'm telling you guys, make the switch, you will not be disappointed. It's just hands down the best. I mean, this stuff, wire, who needs that? So I forgot one part, your crimps are very important. Um, I get these from a tackle warehouse right by my house. You need to make sure that you get the right sizes based on the size mono or cable that you have. Now, a bonus tip here is instead of using one crimp, you could get away with it, but make sure you always use two. You wanna have a backup because if for some reason one of the crimps fails, then you have a backup there just in case. So with that, let's get into the rig and how to make it. So you want your mono section to be longer than the shark that you're trying to target. So at minimum, our mono section is 15 feet. We also run 50 feet of mono sometimes uh, when the hammers are really prevalent because it helps us get a hold of the leader quicker and able to wrap that up and get the shark in faster. This is all the stuff you're gonna need. You need two of the 11 -0 swivels, one of the snap swivels, and then four crimps for each type of mono. You're gonna need a pair of mono cutters. You're gonna wanna make sure you have a pair of cable crimps, as well as a pair of mono crimps for your bigger mono sections. Uh, I get these from Lowe's. I've gone through two pairs of these now over the years. Um, and then a pair of nice cable cutters. This makes it very easy when you're cutting your cable to just cut off a little in there without it flaring out. I have a big bench crimp here. I got this expecting it to be able to do my big mono crimps, but it doesn't do that. So I use it for my cable now. So you get your 15 to 30 feet. Okay, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, you can either start with your cable section or your mono section. I typically start with my mono section, is slide your snap swivel onto your mono section here. So you slide that on. Then you're gonna to wanna to slide on both of your crimps here. Okay, now you do that. Take your swivel, put it on there. Now here's another little bonus tip, okay? So what we do is an offshore loop. It's very simple, okay? Once you have your swivel on there, you take your leader, and you do an overhand knot, basically, is what you're doing, right? So you got an overhand knot, you got both the other crimps in your hand, you're gonna pull that tight, then you're gonna do the same exact thing, you're gonna go back through the loop and push it through the swivel at the same time. So you guys see how I did that? I pulled it around, we're going right through the loop and the swivel. So then once I do that, I like to grab the whole thing like this, pull it, and then you cinch it down as much as you can. You see how I did that, cinched it down. So now with that cinched, we're gonna put the tag end of the mono onto the crimps. And I like to push these guys up as far as I can while re-snugging that. Then we're gonna put it back on. Another little tip to make your rigs a little bit cleaner, just go ahead and give that a twist. Now here comes the fun part. When you're crimping your mono crimps, it's very, important that you don't over crimp. If you over crimp, you risk cutting the mono and breaking off. So I go three quarters of the way down. I never do a full crimp like that with the crimpers. I go about three quarters of the way right about there. And that has always held up and been good for me. So you get your crimp and I like to hold it in there with my fingers just like that. Put it on, make sure that it is lined up and then we're gonna go down and we're gonna crimp it. This part's a little hard. So I go about three quarters of the way, just like that. Any more, you run the risk of breaking it. Any less, it might not be a strong enough crimp. So then I double crimp it. I don't just go once, I go once on one end and then I do once on the other end. So we're gonna go back down. Same thing again, just like that. Very simple. That's how you want it to look when it's done. Ideally, both of these ends would look the same, but that's gonna hold up no problem. I'm very picky with how I like my rigs to look, but I can live with that right there. It's not gonna cause any harm. So then same thing again here. Since we're double crimping it, we're gonna crimp this side. We're gonna go back, crimp the other side. There you have it. First part of the rig is done. We got both sides crimped. Now we're gonna do the same thing again. I have the other end, that snap swivel is still on that end over there. Now we're doing the same exact thing again. So we're gonna put both crimps on, push it back up and then we're gonna recrimp it again. All right, now you have your mono section done. Now we're gonna move on to the cable section. So 
grab your cable. That offshore loop, I do it with everything. Each end of the cable, each end of the mono, I do it, it's just, it adds a little bit of peace of mind to me, knowing that it's gonna hold up a little bit stronger. So you're gonna slide your two crimps on, move it like that, offshore loop, same thing to one of the ends of the mono, it doesn't matter which end, and you slide both of the crimps through, twist that up, and then now we're going to use the big, bench crimpers. Now, you can use either a pair of these here. These are from Penn. These are my favorite hand crimps, but since I have the bench crimper, I'm gonna use these. Uh, the thing is, with the cable, guys, the cable is not like the mono. You can crimp it as hard as you can, and that's what I do. I, I crimp it literally as hard as I can because I know it's not gonna break like the mono. The mono will cut through the crimp will cut through the mono and break it. But the cable is so strong that no matter how hard you crimp it, it's not gonna break. So I'm gonna crimp it as hard as I can here, all the way down. All right, so now we got the crimp done, first crimp. Now we're gonna go back down, do the next one. And just like that, those are so solid, that's not gonna go anywhere. So I run my cable section anywhere from two to three feet, typically nothing more. So. That's a shorter cable section there, but that will be fine. So same thing again, run the two loops through there. And we got that on. Now we're gonna take the hook, put it through there. Another offshore loop, just like that. This helps a ton on the hook, helps prevent it from swiveling and other things like that. I'm really gonna cinch this down. All right, so now we're gonna crimp this again. Stuck on there again. Crimp the last one. And you're good to go. I forgot to mention guys, I love the 600 pound coated. A lot of guys run 800, 1200, same thing with the mono. This goes uh, pretty much the exact same for the smaller rigs for the exception of since there are smaller rigs for black tips and smaller sharks, I'll do one crimp of everything. It's not gonna have a problem. You're not gonna be putting as much drag as you would be on a bigger reel anyways. So same thing to keep in mind for the smaller rigs, I'll run 400 pound cable, 600 pound, doesn't really matter, with typically a 12-0 must-add hook. Um, and then another snap swivel, but it's very simple guys. Once you get the hang of it, this will make your life so much easier. Um, and these are truly the best shark rigs. That's what we run, that's what we've caught all of our sharks on. Um, another little pro tip here, at the end, you'll notice your coil of mono already wants to coil a certain way. So we like to wrap our rigs up nice and neat at the end of the night, especially when we're packing up. So you wrap it around, Kind of pull all the loose ends out, wrap it around. Then, once you have this coil of mono, you take your hook, pop it through there, pop it through there again, back through there again, and back through there. So there you guys have it. Great way to save some money if you're buying your own rig. I made the switch a long time ago and I have never went back. Well, now that we finished the rig, I can tell you guys what this snap swivel's for. It is for these guys here called the spider weight. But there is another method of anchoring your bait. So if you wanna see that, you should go check out this video right over here. You haven't clicked on it yet. You're gonna wanna know. There's more bonus tips. It's like a Sputnik, like a little meow, meow.